Alrighty, welcome back. We are going to complete this interesting paragraph of five verses in Galatians chapter three now. We've covered, I think, uh, as thoroughly as I can, Galatians three, verses 11 and 12, and now Paul is gonna kind of complete the subject which he began in verse number 10, when he said everyone who's, you know, uh, under the law of Moses winds up under a curse because the you know, the scripture, the, the, the law of Moses promises a curse for any, everyone who doesn't obey it. So now we come to verse number 13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, right? So everyone who gets under the law gets a curse, but here's the good news. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. The word redemption implies the idea of a, a purchase, paying a purchase price in order to gain something that one once had. And that's redemption. And how did Christ do that? Paul explains Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us as it is written. Listen to this. Here's an amazing fact of the gospel. Again, quoting from the Old Testament from, uh, from Deuteronomy, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. All right, so we see that uh, Jesus, in one sense at least, received the curse that was due all those who broke the law of Moses and who deserved the curse themselves, Christ, as a substitute, bore that curse. And it was even uh, you know, stated categorically that he was cursed because God himself said in Deuteronomy that anyone who hangs on a tree, they would actually hang corpses on trees of people who had suffered uh, ca from capital punishment. And that was a, to display uh, to other potential lawbreakers, here's what happens to people who commit capital crimes. And God said, don't let them up there, you know, more than just the evening and take them down. But cursed are those who hang on a tree. And so Christ was publicly displayed as one cursed of God. Remember, he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Oh, that's not this you know, cry of a blessed man who's asking God why he has been forsaken, who's got nails through his hands, nails through his feet, who has received 39 lashes, uh, been spit upon, has, had his beard ripped out, a crown of thorns placed upon him and mocked and derided and hanging there naked before the crowds. This is not a sign of a man whom God is blessing. Are you with me? <laughs> you know, no way. This is a sign of a man who's cursed, but not cursed for his own sin. He was sinless. God placed our sin upon him. Christ, you know, bore our sins in his body on the cross. He, he as our substitute, died there cursed of God. And so the curse of the law was poured out on Christ so that we, and particularly as it applies in the, these verses, to those who had broken the, the, the commandments of the law, which is all of us, not all, well, we've all broken the law of Moses, okay? Even the law of Moses hasn't been given to all of us. The law of Moses contains all the moral and ethical laws that God has placed within everyone's conscience. So, so Christ has redeemed us from uh, the, the curse by becoming a curse for us, all right? And now the completion of this paragraph in order, here's the summary of what uh, Christ accomplished, in order that in Christ, in Christ, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, I can't resist commenting a little bit on that regarding how it is sometimes miscommunicated. It's, it's amazing to me that how, in particular, prosperity preachers, the guys who are always talking about money and how God wants you to be rich, can take verses like this and turn it into a prosperity verse, you know, a money verse when it has nothing at all to do that. And they'll hone in on the blessing of Abraham. So Jesus became a curse for us in order that in Christ, the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. And what is the, they say the blessing, well, God made Abraham rich. And so it, that, there it is right there. Jesus died so you could become rich because you could get the blessing of Abraham. You could become rich like Abraham. Well, I just want to remind you, Abraham lived in a tent all of his life. So if that's the kind of prosperity you're looking for, God bless you, all right? Uh, yes, Abraham was rich in cattle and livestock and in silver and in gold, but 
pushing all that aside. This has nothing to do with the blessings, the temporal blessings that Abraham received, <laughs> okay? The blessing of Abraham is the blessing that Abraham was promised. Let's read it in context. Let's go up to the beginning of, of this section, Galatians 3, 8, the, the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, here it is now, here's the blessing of Abraham. One of the first things God said to him in Genesis chapter 12, all the nations will be blessed in you. That's not just your, your, your progeny, those that issue from your loins, but all the families, all the nations, that's all the Gentile nations, those outside the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel, all the nations will be blessed in you. That's the blessing of Abraham that, you know, was foretold where the gospel was forepreached that Gentiles would be saved somehow or another getting into Abraham. And that's been described to us already as getting into his faith. And now it's going to be elaborated on even more, getting into Jesus, becoming one with Christ. And therefore, Christ being the seed of Abraham, then you're in Abraham through Christ. Let's read verse 13 again as we wind this down. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. Now in verse 14, in order that in Christ Jesus, there's the key, and we'll talk about more, more about that next time, the blessing of Abraham, that is all the nations will be blessed in you. The blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles. That's all the nations that God promised he would bless through Abraham. And then finally, so that we would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. That can mean one of two things, but we're out of time, so we'll have to talk about that next time. Thanks. See you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.